I just bought a massive collection of graded comics valued at somewhere around $38,000. And in today's video, we're going to have a small preview of that and the shop tour of Bry's Comics. Stay tuned. Bry's Comics. First off, we have a flash sale. Use code FLASH10 for 10% off anything in stock at BryceComics.com. Many of the slabs from the collection that I just bought are going to be currently listed on the website. And then some of them that aren't listed are going to come to a live sale this Friday on my Instagram page. Uh, Friday, February 18th at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be joined by Steven from Minor Keys Comics over on Instagram. If you're not following him make sure you go give him a follow he's got some awesome keys and great content over on instagram it's always a fun time and i really hope to see you guys there we've also got a giveaway on deck subscribe to the channel comment on this video and like this video for your chance to win amazing spider-man 289 the cgc 9.4 with white pages every single video that you watch and comment on is a new entry into that month's giveaway at the end of the month i pick a random video and a random comment from that video check that the person is subscribed and they are the winner for another chance to win head over to bricecomics.com and sign up for the newsletter this month's giveaway is amazing spider-man 362 in a CGC 9.6 with white pages. And every single month you stay subscribed, you're entered to win a free slab. Lastly, I have a huge announcement, huge announcement. Fingers crossed, if all things go as planned, I'm gonna drop a special video for it this Friday with my biggest announcement yet. And that's all I can say at this point. So stay tuned and hopefully this Friday, I'll be able to drop that video. With that said, enjoy this video, uh, the small preview of this collection and the shop tour. Welcome to Bryce Comics. So when we moved into the place, it had a ton of furniture. This was actually like an old thrift store. So it had a ton of tables and shelving and all kinds of stuff, which was perfect. And I told the guy, you know, just leave all this furniture. It was good for him. He didn't have to get rid of it. One of the things was these shelves, which we haven't used yet because we're not actually open to the public. I mean, we are if somebody wanted to come in, but it would just be a mess because everything's not organized. But hopefully one day we'll use those shelves for uh, new releases and stuff like that. But this is it. It's not much, um, but it's ours, right? And uh, so Cade has, uh, Cade's man in the camera today, um, and he, you know, started this uh, decorating the walls. They keep sending us posters. We keep putting them up. I mean, why not? It's better to look at than white walls. And as you can tell, they're immaculately <laughs> leveled, right, Cade? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else, leave a note in the comments if you can identify with keeping posters straight. It just gets out of hand quick. So this is the newest collection, all right? It's about uh, 250, 290 slabs, something like that. And uh, it's just way too much to actually uh, go through one by one. So I'll just go through here and show some of the highlights. Um, a couple of X Factor Six. These are old price tags. These are from his old price tag, so my my price is going to be a lot different than this. First Apocalypse. A couple of those. Venom Number Three, signed by Donny Cates. I'm actually going to keep that. I'm hoarding any Venom Three stuff that comes in. Double signed Venom Three First Knoll. Uh, Ironheart Number One in a 9.9. .9. So this was uh, an interesting one when he sent me the list. Uh, he put on there that he had an Ironheart one. This is the 1 in 10 Vecchio retailer incentive, and he said it was 9.9. And I was just foaming at the mouth trying to get this. I wanted the whole collection just for this one book, and then he showed up, and it was a CBCS, which is considerably different than a CGC. It's still awesome. It's still great, but um, CBCS is not the same as a CGC 9.9. Um, another uh, Ironheart 9.8. A bunch of really cool variants. Uh, here's a Thor 1 uh, signed by Gabriel Del Otto. Um, so there's a lot of cool store exclusives and variants in this collection. Tokyo Ghost number one signed by Sean Murphy 9.8. That show's coming to HBO soon. Venom 7 signed by Donny Cates. Bitterroot number one, signed by Sanford Green. A couple of different Bitterroot number one. Uh, that's an option indie. There's some Silver Age stuff in here. So like Amazing Spider-Man 37, first Norman Osborn. Uh, there's a good mix of, you know, modern and some silver, some awesome exclusives, some Miles Morales stuff. 
some Bronze Age Daredevil. This is one of my favorite uh, Frank Miller covers. Uh, a ton of uh, modern spec stuff like America number no. one, first solo series for America. Wolverine number no. one, signed by Ben Percy, manufactured with uh, the print run actually on the cover, which is interesting. The JTC negative variant. So this is a really cool uh, variant cover. It's technically a hidden gem variant cover. And once again, a hidden gem means that it's previous art that was never actually used in publication. So this is a tribute to Cockrum and Wine, and this is art that was never actually used. Um, and they put it together on a collage. I really, I really like that cover. A bunch of signed uh, exclusives. Here's uh, Clayton Crane signature, a bunch of Clayton Crane stuff. Uncanny X-Men 240, uh, 221 and Uncanny X-Men 244, first appearance of Jubilee. And there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copies of the first appearance of Jubilee in a 9.6. So I'm stoked to have that. That's an awesome spec book right there. Static number one, signed by Jimmy Palamodi. Uh, first appearance of Static. That's a, I'm stoked to have that one. This is a trippy book right here. So here's Baby Huey number 84. And this is from 1969 and it's a 9.8 um, PGX, of course. But this is a square bound book. And I mean, it's Baby Huey, but I've never seen a Baby Huey book in this kind of condition. I've, I'm kind of impressed by it just because, um, you know, these were notoriously not collected and kept in good condition. They were just read to death. And to see a square bound book from this era in that condition is kind of impressive. Uh, Dark Hawk number one, can't go wrong with Dark Hawk, right? Where you at, Mickey? Uh, Teen Titans 12, first full appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. And a lot of these books have not been pressed or cleaned. So um, that could be beneficial. Some old Superman stuff and an old PGX, PGX case. Obviously, you know, it's, everything has a price. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a banger spec book or a really rare book. I mean, it still has a price, whether it's 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Oh, here's a good one. Moon Knight number one, hip hop variant cover. Schoolboy Q's Oxymoron album cover homage. Super hot book right there. He had a whole bunch more of these hip hop variants, but he decided to keep a lot of them. But there are some really good hip hop variants in here as well. A bunch of Batman stuff. So a bunch of Punchline, Batman 92, uh, Batman 91, a bunch of Joker stuff, a good mix of DC stuff in here as well. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 95, first appearance of Jenica as a Ninja Turtle. I'm going to actually probably hold on to these. I think Jenica is a really good spec right now, especially for the price you can get them at. Some of these awesome, um, amazing Spider-Man, the originals, and some exclusives. Amazing Spider-Man 498 for Silk. Another John Tyler Christopher exclusive negative variant. First Spider-Woman, Spider-Woman number one in the 9-8. First solo series for Spider-Woman. Here's a cool book, Spider-Gwen number zero, double signed and sketched by Jason Latour, Rico Renzi, and Robbie Rodriguez. So this reprints Edge of Spider-Verse 2. Really awesome book, you get the exact same cover for a fraction of the price. Some Silver Age stuff, um, Origin and First Appearance of the Gladiator and Daredevil 18. Some really cool Venom variants, uh, Clayton Crane signature on that one. This one I'll stay in my Dylan Brock Horde, Venom number 9, First Dylan Brock. I've always wanted this book in the PC. This is the uh, first appearance of Giant Man, when Ant-Man becomes Giant Man, Tales of Sonic number 49. I'll have to take a closer look at this because this might be a good crack press candidate. It's obviously never been pressed. Batman Beyond in a 9.8. Uh, first Jane Foster as Thor in a 9.4. Miss Marvel number one. Uh, this is a really awesome Venom verse signed by like, I don't know, 10 people or something like that. Nick's number three and an 8.5 white pages, first appearance of X-23. New Mutants 98 and a 9.2 and New Stand, first Deadpool. Then there's even some really rare stuff from the 50s, like this World of Fantasy in a 7.5, which is actually a really high grade for this book. 
and stories to keep you spellbound, also from the 50s. So interesting mix. And then in here, obviously because they don't fit in regular boxes is some a bunch of Last Ronin stuff. He also left me with these couple of boxes right here of raw books that need to be um, just looked up. Obviously there's some really good stuff in here. Um, but when he brought these, you know, he said, what do you think these are worth? And as you can tell, I mean, when you look at this entire box of stuff, it's like, well, I'd have to look up every single one to find out a price. So it's like, there's no way I could just tell you what this is worth. And this, this comes up a lot. You know, one time somebody recently just emailed me and said, Hey, I have 3000 books. What do you think it's worth? It's like, the only way to tell you is if I know exactly what they are and exactly what condition they're in. So anyways, he just left these with me and said, you know, look them up. And uh, we already agreed on like the percentage and I'll get back to him on the price. But there's some really good stuff in here. So these will be coming, they, they might, some of these might get uh, graded. There's the one in 25 for Ironheart one. There's the one in 10 for Ironheart one. First Taskmaster. So here's another box of keys that are priced and ready to go for an upcoming live sale. A bunch of early Thanos keys. Two really nice copies of this. Uh, what if number 31. Some Star Wars stuff. First Black Kersantan. Just a bunch of random keys. Really random keys in here. First Todd McFarlane art. Ties to ASM 252 for a first black suit. I might actually get this one graded if I can press it and clean it, get it a little nicer than I know. That iconic Todd McFarlane cover, 45 bucks. First appearance of Bam Bam. Now, talk about an undervalued key, right guys? 25 bucks for the first appearance of Bam Bam. Then over here, we've got your shipping station. You've got your pressing station. So unfortunately, we're not uh, taking submissions for pressing right now because we're bottlenecked with our own stuff. Um, but I am hiring for a presser. So if you or somebody you know uh, has experience in pressing, hit me up. I'll put the details up on the screen here um, and feel free to reach out. And I'll show you here in just a minute my plan for that if we do find someone for the pressing. Um, so here's the stuff that's ready to go to CGC. I actually need to get in here and send some submissions off. Look, we got some Moon Knight stuff. We got some Swordmaster. Don't sleep on Swordmaster, guys. I think that's going to be a good spec book. We got some hip hop covers. Here's some more stuff ready to go out to CGC. Incredible Hulk 340 newsstand. We're going to pre screen this for 9 8. Uh, smash like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for our future video about this book. When this one comes back from CGC, I'm going to do a whole video on this because it's been a very interesting journey for this book. Um, and then some other uh, keys that are going out to CGC. You have to keep stuff in different tiers when you submit to CGC. So um, that's why we have different boxes and stuff. Unfortunately, it's a low grade. It's got a bunch of scratches and stuff on it for first. Harley Quinn. A live sale coming soon. We've got a bunch of Thor stuff. These are actually all just keys from the Thor run. This is that one collection I did a video on. But there's also some Fantastic Four keys in here. Love that cover. And some X-Men keys in here as well. So those will all be coming to a live sale soon. Here's some more stuff. This is where the magic happens for the Instagram live sales. Uh, they're a lot of fun if you haven't attended. I highly recommend it. Great deals and a, just a good fun way to spend four hours on a Friday night. Bunch of X-Men stuff coming to a live sale. Some other raw books. Here is the Mad Scientist pressing and cleaning detail station. So we've got the good old magnifying glass. We've got this one here with lights on it so we can get up and up close and personal and see you got your erasers and your um, little rubber pads for cleaning different types of books um, and the newest addition is this tiny little baby mini iron it's called a tack iron I just think it's so cool it's shaped like a regular iron um, and that's so you can get into spots 
Maybe you just need to spot treat um, a spine tick right here. You put some SRP paper and you can just iron it, iron it out. A little detail work there. And then over here we have spec books. These are all slabs that are specs. And these are all raw books that are specs. So all of these are spec books. At some point they could be um, actually worth something. So for example, we have uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America number seven. And this is the first appearance of Avril Kincaid, a uh, agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. who later becomes Quasar. I think that book has a lot of spec, but until then it's just gonna sit here. Here's some stuff that's already listed up on the website, ready to go. Here's some stuff that uh, needs to be processed for a live sale. So for example, what's in this box? Oh, look at that. The Recount Ash Can. <laughs> I mean, there's some really good stuff in here. The reason it says old is because it's been brought out once before, but sometimes some of the stuff hasn't been brought out in over a year. And as you guys know, Books can have many lives, and something that a year ago was cover price might be a super hot spec. So, ton of stuff coming to live sales there. All right, so I want to show you guys the potential for expansion. So, um, this building is actually linked to this other side of the building, and if I can find somebody to do the pressing, uh, we're going to rent this other unit that's attached over here. And the lighting's going to be terrible, but this used to be the old uh, mini mart here in Paradise, California. What I want to do is rent this section, the middle section here, and we can put up a big partition right here, make this a solid wall, and I would have all of this space here in the middle um, to have as just pressing, pressing and cleaning, and we can open up submissions, have at least one full-time presser, get, have this completely renovated, spotless and clean, and have just you know rows of presses and cleaning supplies and stuff and just really open up that whole wing of the business. It's attached right here, it's ready to go. I already talked to the landlord, he's, he, you know, he's down to, to make this work for us and do whatever construction's needed. So you just need to find that person. Oh, and you know we could always get into the business of selling cigarettes too. <laughs> every once in a while someone stops by to try to get cigarettes and beer, but <laughs> we haven't had it. So the reason it's all like this is that this, our town in Paradise, California, went through a devastating wildfire years ago and basically, basically leveled the town. I mean, there's like probably 80 or 90 percent of the structures and the buildings and the houses were all burned and destroyed. This one did not burn. Um, however, the business didn't survive the, the, the mini mark. So um, that's why it's just been vacant. It's been vacant all these years until I finally rented this place. And that's pretty much it. That's Bryce Comics. Obviously, it's a work in progress, um, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the biggest perks of working at Bryce Comics is you get free snacks and energy drinks. Right, Kay? Oh yeah, best part. <laughs> we go through a lot of caffeine here. Um, it just helps the day go by, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon. So I'm editing the video, and I realized that I forgot to tell the uh, story of this collection. And I know that that's important and interesting to a lot of people, so I'll try to just break it down real quick on how this came to be. So this guy reached out, and he said, hey, I have uh, these 500 slabs that I'm looking to sell. Are you interested? And I said, yeah, I'll buy all of them at 70% of the recent sales on eBay. And this was the first lesson that I learned from this transaction is I need to specify on that that it's 70% of recent sales if they're all CGC slabs and if all of the cases are in perfect condition. Okay, if, if the cases have defects or scratches or scuffing or anything like that, then I discount the slab a little bit. I mean, the alternative is to send it back to CGC to be reholdered, but that's expensive, but more importantly, it takes a ton of time. So I think, uh, you know, a good middle ground is just to discount the slab a little bit, say, hey, there's scuffing on the slab. So he sends me a list of 500 books and I look up all the values. I mean, we're talking about like a solid four to six maybe even eight hours of work looking up all these books. And he comes back and he says, okay, well, how about we take out these 200? I'll just keep these at that price. And I thought, oh man, that sucks. Like I just, I just looked up 200 books and found the values of them that you know I'm not gonna buy. 
But it doesn't really matter in the long run. I wanted to make the deal happen and we made it happen. So he drove out. He drove out from Colorado, which is about a 30 hour drive each way, I believe, uh, to where I'm at. And he drove out and he shows up and none of them are in order. Okay, that's the first thing. It's like, it's like okay, here you are. Here's, here's the slabs. Here's the 290 slabs. Uh, you know, but I need to check them in, right? Like I need to make sure that they're all here and make sure that they're all what they say they are. And some, you know, sometimes it's just a clerical error. And this one's a nine six. It says it was nine eight, or it is a nine eight. Says it was nine six. You know, you have to actually check them all in, but they weren't in order. So he was with his wife. It was like eight o'clock at night, and we get like forty slabs in, right? And we're forty slabs in. We have two hundred and fifty to go. And we've been there for like over an hour, and I'm like, man, it's getting late. Like we're gonna have to figure something out. Like there's no way we're gonna get through all this tonight. And uh, so we ended up just making a deal. I said, how about you know I just offer you X amount, you know, a couple thousand dollars less than we said because. You know, some of them have scuffing and um, a, a, and some of them are CBCS and there's a significant price difference for CBCS versus CGC. So he said, okay, he's cool with that. Um, I gave him $25,000. All in all, it was a really smooth transaction, really cool guy, really nice guy. Um, I think I overpaid a little bit. I think in the future, if I were to buy something like this, um, because of the time that's involved to move uh, this quantity of slabs, I think you know I need to uh, give myself a little bit more of a buffer. Um, and one thing's for sure is I always feel just a little bit jealous of the person driving away from my shop. I mean, they drive in with the truck, the truck's riding low or the car's riding low. The guy that brought the $60,000 collection, he was in a Kia that was like scraping the pavement when he came in. And when he was riding out, he was riding high. And he's $60,000 richer, this guy's $25,000 richer. And I'm sitting there with a massive mountain of comic books that need to be organized and sold. And just the stress and anxiety level is just rising for me. But you know, uh, <laughs> then I start to process it and I start to sell it and I start to feel better and at the end of the day, you know, it, it's working um, and so I'm always grateful and humbled and if I get to keep a couple books out of the collection for myself, it's, it just feels like an added bonus. So this was another successful one and that was the story of this collection. If you would have told me two years ago that I would be selling comic books for a living, that I would have a full-time employee and be able to pay them a, a very competitive wage, that I would have a large office space, that people would be driving halfway across the country to sell me comic books for tens of thousands of dollars on a consistent basis, I would have told you that you're crazy, but this is the reality that I'm living and I'm incredibly grateful, incredibly humbled for all of the support. So thank you to all of you that have come along with me on this journey. I can't wait to see where it's headed and it's all super exciting. And once again, thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.